How you doing? So this is the Scythe Big Shuriken 3, and despite its name, this thing is uh, it's pretty tiny. At height of just 69 millimeters, and that includes the fan. This thing is compact, making it a great option for a compact build, like a mini ITX build. Although its height does put it low down, close to the socket, things like RAM and motherboard I.O. were considered in the design, meaning interference is going to be a non-issue. The fan that comes on this cooler is not a thick boy. It's only 17 millimeters wide, and that's tiny. But just because everything is shrunk down doesn't mean you're going to lose build quality. The K's 120 Slim has all the amenities you would find on a normal Thick Boy 120 like fluid dynamic bearings and anti-vibration pads. Like I said before, this thing is short. It's only 69 millimeters tall and that makes it just slightly taller than some RAM modules. Uh, for scale, uh, think about the popular G-Skill Triton Z RGB. Those modules are 44 millimeters tall. On the back side, from base plate to fin stack, you're given 26 millimeters of I.O. clearance. And the cooler itself is an asymmetrical build, giving you as much GPU space as possible. The cooler is a five heat pipe design with the copper heat pipes and base plate all getting a nice finish of nickel plating. And in typical scythe fashion, the fin stack is covered with a nice black anodized skirt, which travels the perimeter of the fin stack, covering up things like heat pipe ends and giving this cooler like a nice premium finish. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again, this is one of the reasons I love scythe. They didn't have to do that. You know, they could have just saved some money and just use those like flimsy metal spring fan holders, but they didn't, they did this, it looks 10 times better, and I do appreciate it. So, the cooler does ship with the K's 120 Slim that you see mounted to it right now, but it does come with the screws needed to mount a normal Thick Boy fan. So this is the same exact fan, this is just the K's 120, and we're gonna test that as well. So we're gonna run it in its normal stock configuration, coming out of the box with a Slim on it and see, you know, how it runs, but maybe you don't need all the space saving that you get from the Slim and you wanna throw on a Thick Boy. Uh, does that get you any extra cooling? I don't know. We're going to find out. We'll run it like this, and we'll run it like that, and we'll see the difference. So let's go. <sighs> back to the story. So we're back, and how do you think it did? Uh, there's there's also a third fan here now. You might be wondering, but we'll get to that in just a second. Let's talk about the, the Big Shuriken 3 and how it did out of the box with the K's 120 Slim on there versus, you know, basically the regular Thick Boy K's 120. Uh, this is the fan you would get on, like, the Mugen 5. So we put that on there just to see how it fared versus the Slim. So today's test, respectively, we had a room temperature of 26.1, 26.2, so about the same after 30 minutes of Prime 95 on the old i5-2500K. At 4.8 GHz, we had a max package temperature of 79.7 and 81.2. You might be wondering, how did the thin fan outperform the thick fan? Well, there's actually a good reason for that. The thin fan that ships um, with the Shuriken 3, is an 1800 RPM fan, where this one that comes on the Mugan 5 is a 1200 RPM fan. So yes, this one spins a bit faster than this guy, giving us a little bit cooler temperatures, but there's a bit of a trade-off. If you take a listen to these two running on their full max RPM settings, cooling down the CPU, uh, this one is actually quite louder than this guy. So what that basically means is if uh, space is not at a premium in your case, go ahead and throw a thicker fan on there that spins a little, a little slower. You're going to get about the same temperatures, but it's not going to be as loud. But if space is at a premium, you're not going to go wrong with the slim fan. It might be a little louder, but it's just going to cool as well as, you know, any other thicker fan out there. But then that got me wondering, is, is that the limit of this cooler? Did it have any more thermal capacity locked in there that we could maybe squeeze out of it? So I grabbed one of my NF-A12X25s, threw it on there, ran the same test for the same amount of time on the same settings, and uh, things improved slightly. So I will start out by saying that the room temperature did, improve, or did increase a little bit for this one at 26.4. All these had the same idle temperature, 50.8, which I thought was interesting. But after the 30 minutes of Prime 95, this thing came in at 78.5, giving us a delta of 52.1. So it wasn't like a giant leap forward. This thing's about taxed for what it can do with uh, the size it is. But it did improve it a little bit. But uh, keep in mind, this is also a 2000 RPM fan and probably one of the better fans on the market. And that's yeah, pretty much all we have to say about it. It's a nice little cooler, nice form factor. If you got limited space in your case, this is going to do the job very well. You got a little extra space, maybe throw on a thicker fan. Gonna get the noise levels down just a hair, but you know, it's gonna keep your CPU cool, and that's all that matters when you're looking for a small, small CPU cooler to fit in a small, small case. So, thank you for watching. This is Major Hardware. If you haven't yet, maybe consider, you know, hitting that subscribe button, getting subscribed to the channel. If you have any ideas or something you want me to check out, 
or maybe build or do something, leave me a comment down below. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.